So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Skurfa Diver 1. I've taken a look at a Skurfa before and I liked it, I didn't love it. Uh, and this one I think is a little bit better, a little bit more what the brand I guess stands for, a little bit more what the brand is based off of. And let's take a closer look. We have a diameter of about 40 millimeters, lug to lug of 47.7, height of 14.6, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications, the watch runs on the Ronda 715 SM movement. Uh, it is a quartz movement and it also has a five year battery life, which is pretty nice to see. Usually we're looking at three for most quartz watches. We have a grade two titanium case. I don't think the bracelet's necessarily a standard option, but you can always order the bracelet alongside it. For the case, the bezel and the bracelet are all made of grade two titanium. We do have a helium escape valve, as you can see in the side there. We have a 120 click unidirectional aluminum bezel, domed sapphire crystal with a blue AR coating, uh, 500 meters of state of water resistance, which is great. A screw down crown, which definitely helps. BGW9 for everything that glows on the watch. And last but not least, the watch retails for give or take with the bracelet about $350, depending on exchange rates and uh, all that good stuff. So starting off with the dial, and I think this is one of the best parts of this watch, we have a blue brush dial, which as you move it, it goes from a very deep dark blue, which you know, it you can always tell it's blue, it just goes darker, it never really feels black. But as you move it, different shades of light blue come out to play, and you kind of get a gradient effect that's really nicely done, very nicely executed. And it is just a pretty premium dial in person. The way it's done, the quality of the brushing, the quality of the light play, the quality of uh, the color changingness that appears on the dial, it feels very, very much higher quality than you would expect it to for this price point. Had this dial been on a dress watch, I would have been in love. This, would, uh, this is a perfect dial, great execution, and really is something that makes this dive watch really classy. Looking a little bit more generally, we do have sword style hands here coated in white, which helps with the contrast and also ties into the wider loom signature. And then we have rectangular markers for the hours, all completely loom filled and three dimensional instead of being uh, surrounded by metal in any way. And then at the 12 o'clock, we have kind of more of a two and a half trapezoidal type marker. Obviously that helps with delineation. You can very easily tell where the 12 o'clock is, your orientation very nicely. But uh, to me, I would have preferred maybe more traditional just double size rectangular shape instead of this more odd shaped marker. The text is kept very minimally here, which I like. We do have the Skirt for Watches logo in the little box here at 12 o'clock, and then Diver One, which is the model name here at the bottom. I really like that this watch, at least on their website and from the owner's perspective, really is more geared towards uh, the true enthusiasts slash people who actually do dive with their watches. So you can kind of tell there isn't a lot of frivolous fun information on the dial. You don't have to have 500 meters written out, anything like that. It is just very simple, very clean, and a really good looking dial. One thing I will say is the loom signature is a little bit yellow leaning compared to the rest of the text on the dial, which is very much pure white, as well as the way the hands are coated. I've seen it very hard to match a BGW9 loom signature to any other white tones you put on the dial, so that it is kind of something you're battling with innately. Uh, but as it stands, it's not too terrible, especially in direct sunlight. It kind of, the difference kind of goes away a little bit, but as it stands, you will notice that difference if you're a little bit of a stickler like me. And something that's nice to note is this Ronda movement actually hits every seconds marker directly on the dot, which is good to see. It's a little bit of an earmark quality and it doesn't hurt. So taking a look at the Skurfa up close, you can see how well done that brushing on the dial is. Of course, with typical brushing patterns, we see there are lighter and darker shades of the actual base color in it, which will lead to this very nice color change in effect, depending on the angle that you have it at. And this is no exception. It is done well. And overall, the just general color tone they went with, I think is very pleasing. You can also see here the text they went for is a nice pure white, which matches really well with the whiteness of the hands. Uh, and on top of that, the text itself is three dimensional. Same story goes for the Diver 1 text down here. So it is all done pretty well and very cleanly. There aren't any mistakes that I see right off the bat. And something you can just really tell here is how many different shades of blue are popping out at you at the moment. You have this little lighter blue coming from the top, darker, more steely blues coming here from the bottom. And this is something you do get throughout the day with the watch because as you move your wrist, the watch is very reactive because the domed crystal with the watch is very reactive. So any tiny little uh, movement of the hand gives you a very dynamic looking dial and it is just really nice to see day to day. Looking at the markers themselves, you can tell the loom plot is built upon a tiny little kind of initially laid down white marker. The white marker itself contrasting, of course, against the BGW9 loom signature, but as it stands, it's not too bad. And when you're at arm's length, it doesn't matter as much, but it is just something to keep in mind. 
Most of the loom also is applied very well. It isn't very crackly. It isn't super splotchy. It is pretty nice and fine. Of course, three-dimensional as well. You can kind of tell at that angle, it is really raising up off the dial. You can tell some of the markers like here at eight o'clock and here at nine o'clock, there are some little splotches of loom missing. And to be fair, it's not necessarily a QC issue. It's just something I would have liked to see uh, perfect it a little bit more, a little bit more of a harsher scrutinization. As it stands, it still does look good, and these honestly aren't things I had noticed until I really took a good look at the watch. So I think for the price point, it is pretty fair. Something I also really like is you can tell the outer seconds track does not have that same brushing pattern that the dial has. So as the dial lights up itself, it contrasts really nicely against the seconds track and makes the seconds track always very legible, which is just a nice touch. Date window is nicely framed and cut down. The print on the date window could be a little bit thicker, but really no complaints there. The hands themselves, there aren't really any imperfections to talk about. They are a little bit, I guess you can say fuzzy on the edges. They could be a little bit more prim and proper. The actual white coloration they did to the hands also matches very nicely with the text on the dial. So that's something I think most brands would get wrong. And it's nice to see that they actually took the extra step here to make them match so well. I'm looking here kind of at the edge of that minute hand, you can see it has this bulbous 3D quality to it. It has an almost lacquerish, glowish uh, sheen to the hand itself. So it is pretty well done. It stands out very nicely, contrasts really well with the dial. And overall, I think the dial is very beautifully done. Very, very minor QC issues here, mainly with the loom itself. So as far as QC and dials go, this is really, really up there with some of the best that I've seen. So taking a look at the case of this watch, and this is maybe nothing to write home about, but it is still nice. Obviously the dial is kind of the star of the show here, but the case is no slouch. We have a pretty simple case shape overall, kind of Submariner-esque. Honestly, to me, a little bit more similar to the way that Steinhardt cases are shaped. So uh, if you know what those feel like, this is very similar. Very prominent crown guards, pretty large crown with good knurling that has an easy grip to it. Really nice threading to screw in, screw out the crown as well. We actually have only brushing here on the case and on the bracelet. So vertical brushing on the top of the lugs, vertical brushing on the bracelet, uh, vertical brushing on the sides as well of the case. Uh, very cohesive finishing, very fine finishing, so it doesn't look cheap. You can see the crown itself is more circularly brushed in there, so it is nice to have that little bit of contrast of finishing. And then the bezel itself has a little bit more of a horizontal brushing very lightly against the uh, sides in this circular fashion. You can kind of tell the knurling is very shallow on the bezel itself, but it, it kind of really laps over into the front part of the bezel. Usually you don't see the knurling as much from the top view down. And it is an interesting look. It makes it feel a little bit more tooltastic in a way. The grip is actually very nice on it and the ticking action is really good. Um, it's not really the most uh, deep click because of course it is titanium. It doesn't have a lot of uh, deep and loud resonance to it. But as it stands, it is a nice feel. There really isn't any back play, which is nice to see of a watch at this price point. And really, I don't have any complaints about the bezel. We of course do have the helium escape valve that I mentioned earlier. We have drilled lug holes, which is always nice to see. Very simple case back, a little bit of text on the outside, a little bit of a blasting with the scarf logo in the very middle. Uh, nothing too crazy, but m much better than just a plain uh, brushed case back. The case back is also done in titanium, which is nice to see because a lot of companies skimp out on that part and would just make this of steel. They don't really have to go through the extra step, but Scurfa is basically putting all hands on deck and making sure everything is kind of built to a standard it doesn't need to be. We do have a little bit more of a stamped class type look here. It isn't the nicest feel, but it isn't bad either. It has a push button deployment clasp here, uh, Scurfa logo in that same box style uh, put into the clasp edge here. We do have a link system, which looks a little bit old, but that might just be because of the titanium and the darkness and the uh, brushing effect. Almost Jubilee, but maybe more of a uh, tough looking, more sporty type Jubilee look to the bracelet here. We do have five links. It does articulate pretty well, and it is just very comfortable on wrist, especially being made of titanium. Again, being made of titanium, we do of course have a uh, pin and collar links there. So really no complaints on the bracelet. It is comfortable. It is fairly well made. We do have three holes of micro adjust and all in all for the price point, especially the bracelet isn't overpriced. I don't think it was any more than like 60, 80 bucks or something like that. So very, very fair play to Scurfa for, for making uh, pretty good quality stuff at a really affordable price point. I mentioned earlier that the bezel here is aluminum. Uh, at the end of the day, 
it is nice to see of course it will fade over time a little bit and probably look even better over time in my opinion the blue tone matches really well as the dial is in its kind of base darkest state and as it lights up a little bit more it contrasts perfectly against the bezel the blue tones are all very harmonious here and the way the silver numerals pop out against the dial it, it, of course it's not really a pure white tone so it doesn't match as perfectly as maybe i want it to with that being said it doesn't really look out of place either it does still tie in very well would i have liked maybe a pure white yes but uh can't complain too much and something i will note you can see as i tilt the watch there really is a heavy dome to the crystal here could obviously tell at this angle it's a very nice dome so it's something that's interesting I don't know if that's something that's more beneficial for higher depths or whatnot but as it stands it looks good and it does help play with the crystal and the dial a lot so really I think it's a nice addition and then before we move on to how the watch wears, I will say, of course, this is a thicker watch. It's a little over 14 millimeters. But with that being said, it doesn't wear thickly at all. You can see the mid case itself is fairly thin and then you have the fairly beefy case back and then the fairly thin bezel that pops up on top of that. So with the case back wearing more into the wrist, that height differential really goes away and you get closer to maybe like an 11 millimeter watch, give or take, and it feels pretty slim on wrist, especially considering its size. So I've never felt this was too big, too top heavy, or too uh, uh, tall on my wrist. So even if the dimensions sound weird to you, it does wear well. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing my Christopher Ward Bel Canto here. And maybe you can tell through camera, it's a little hard to see, but I can tell in person. This is grade two titanium, whereas this is grade five. And you can kind of see there is just a little bit more of an elegance with the grade five. The color is a little bit more homogenous and cooler, whereas this one has a little bit more of a yellowish uh, bright tone to it, or not bright, but like just uh, almost uh, warm tone, I guess you can say. So it is definitely, at least in my opinion, very visually different. Obviously, if this was a bracelet, it'd be a little easier to tell. But as it stands, yes, this is a different looking metal and it is more titanium-y looking. So here we have the watch sitting in my six and a half inch wrist and I think it fits perfectly. Really good dimensions on this. The lug to lug is not too long at all. We do have female end links, so it does conform really well on the wrist. Uh, overall, again, even for a 14-ish millimeter watch, it doesn't sit up too high. That case back really sits into the wrist and it actually looks very thin, uh, just profile on wise. So it is a comfortable watch to wear. The crown and the crown guards do stick out a little bit. So if you wear your watch up higher like me, it does dig slightly, but not really much at all. There's not really any sharp edges here, so it's not uncomfortable to wear in any way. Uh, so yeah, it is a very nice, pleasant wearing experience. And that being said too, with this whole titanium case, titanium bracelet look, it's very light on the wrist, really comfortable, and feels good. Looking at it from the side view, you can see what I said there, where even though we don't have a lot of curvature to the case, the case back literally sits inside of the wrist. If you wear it a little bit more above the bone, where people say this is where you're supposed to wear your watch, uh, it sits really inside of the wrist, basically. So it is a very thin profile for a thick watch, and they really did get the case dimensions, the case feel pretty nice here. Moving the watch up a little bit, I have closer to a six inch wrist here. You can see it is bordering a little bit bigger. It's still not too big. I can still pull it off very easily. So this is a watch that will really fit nicely on multiple wrist sizes and look good on most of them. So moving on to some other straps, this is the original rubber strap that comes from Skurfo with a titanium matching buckle. I believe all variations come with a rubber strap standard and the bracelet's an additional option. The strap itself is really well done. It's pretty comfortable, pretty flexible. There's a lot of holes here, so it will fit on many wrist sizes and has a cool little bit of an architectural flair to the uh, strap itself, a little bit of a ridging along there on the middle. I'm typically not the biggest fan of that, but this is a little bit more tastefully done than most. You can see genuine rubber on the underside and signed skirt for watches. And you can see a little bit of a cutout here in the strap itself to help with just the comfort and the buildup of air under the wrist. So you can see the watch strap, of course, is a little bit long. If I wore it on this all the time, I would cut it to size a little bit easier. I am on the third to last hole with a 6.5 inch wrist, so keep that in mind. You can, at certain angles, feel the logoing of the underside kind of bump into your wrist itself, or at least my wrist bone. So that does lead to a little bit of a point of uncomfortability. So this isn't the most supple, the most comfortable rubber strap I've ever tried on, but it definitely is serviceable. Personally, I would rather go for the uh, bracelet option, but this is definitely serviceable, especially at the price point. Looking at some other straps here, we have this Chevron strap by Crown & Buckle. 
this gray Harris type of texture looks really nice with the blue in my opinion. Even though this is a one pass NATO, it doesn't add too much to the already thick wash and it wears still nicely on wrist in my opinion. I would have no issues putting this on a NATO strap. If you wanna go a little bit sportier, here we have this gray silicone NATO from Benchmark Straps off of Amazon really sportens the watch up a little bit, is a great alternative to the rubber strap that the watch comes with, and is very thin. So if you have, for some reason, a problem with the thickness, this will add pretty much no extra thickness to it. Super comfortable, plants the watch really nicely on the wrist, especially if you have trouble with maybe the strap, originally it comes with bowing out a little bit too much if you have a smaller wrist. This one will help it plant nice and easy on the wrist very much doesn't go anywhere, can't really move at all no matter how much you shake it. So really comfortable on the wrist and just I think color wise pairs nicely with the watch. If you wanna add a little bit more color, here we have, I believe it's called the Matte Supreme NATO from uh, Crown & Buckle. Strap color really pops against that blue dial and I think it's a pretty good combo. Pretty fun, pretty colorful, pretty lively. Uh, and again, just no complaints. This watch surprisingly wears well on NATOs despite the thickness. And lastly, the classic white Archer silicone strap off of Amazon works perfectly with the white tones that the loom and the text is going for. And again, even at this angle, it's pretty hard to tell that the loom and the hands are mismatching. So in most lighting, it's okay. But again, I just can hyper fixate on it a little bit. And you can kind of tell, especially like at angles right there. So just keep that in mind. Just like the silicone NATO before it helps plant the watch really nicely on the wrist, very comfortable. Uh, and to be fair, I think it looks perfect with the watch, feels very summery, plays really well off the lighter blue tones, the white tones, and it is just a very good combo. At the end of the day, I think if you get this watch, there's no reason you shouldn't spend an extra 14 bucks just to try out this extra Archer silicone strap and see if you like it. So taking a look at the loom here, we can see it does glow very well, so much so that it helps light up some parts of the dial. It is a little bit more dramatic on camera than it is in person, but it is still a very nice glow. Like you can see, it does light up my hand, which does happen in person as well. So they did a pretty good application of loom here. You can tell there was a lot of three dimensionality to those pips. You can see the little lollipop pip on the end of the second hand, so you can even tell down to the second uh, in the dark. And of course you have the 12 o'clock pip lit on the bezel as well, so can't complain with the loom signature. It doesn't last forever, but while it does last, very bright and very legible. Comparing it to the Timex Snoopy, you can actually tell it is brighter than the Snoopy. My battery is probably dying on the Snoopy to be fair as well, but even as it stands, the Skurfa is a really bright, really uh, good application of loom, and it is very consistent as well. There aren't any spots that are darker or lighter or smudged on the dial itself. So every little aspect that is kind of reliant on detail for the Skurfa is executed well. So pros and cons of the Skurfa, and to me one of the biggest pros undeniably is the dial. I think this is probably one of the best dials I've personally seen. The way the brushing is done is very good. Uh, the color depth that you get from the watch is really nice to see. Uh, and I think it just is a pleasing shade of blue as well. The way that all the white elements contrast very nice against the blue dial, the depth that you get from it, it goes from dark to light. There is just a lot to love about the dial itself and the way it's laid out and just how generally aesthetically pleasing it is. So my next pro is just gonna be the build quality itself. The brushing is done very well. The case construction is done pretty nicely. It sits comfortably on the wrist despite its thickness. The bezel itself is also done really nicely. It doesn't have any back play to it. The click is very defined, has a nice audible sound to it. And there really just isn't much I can fault the watch on in terms of construction. And last but not least, I think the value for money that you're getting is pretty insane. You're getting a beautifully made dial, a well-constructed case, a pretty well put together, uh, both aesthetically and physically watch. And to me, there's not a lot out there that directly competes with this. You're not getting a full titanium watch with a titanium bracelet at around $300 really anywhere else. So moving on to cons, and personally, my only real major gripe with the watch is the bracelet styling. I don't think, or just, I don't personally love the way it looks, the way it integrates into the watch design. I could have done better with maybe just an oyster three link style bracelet or even a kind of beads of rice uh, skin diver feel to the watch. As it stands, I just don't love how it looks with this link style. Uh, it's serviceable, it's done decently well. Again, the titanium's a cool aspect to it. And typically if you're doing more articulating links, I believe this is a five link bracelet. It's kind of more expensive to do in general, but why don't you just simplify it, make it three links or something like that and kind of simplify the look. And my only other real con with the watch is I don't personally like the 12 o'clock marker, that kind of trapezoidal-ish shape, 
really detracts from the watch for me. I don't know if it's meant to be like a term of legibility, it like really orients you at the 12 o'clock if you're in the water or something like that. I don't know. Uh, in theory, you should already be wearing your watch the right way up, I guess. Uh, so you don't really need that extra hint of uh, orientation. But as it stands, I guess it makes the watch a little bit more unique, but I would have just preferred a simple uh, larger rectangular or square marker. So final thoughts on the watch, and I actually like it a lot more than I thought I did. I originally bought this watch to kind of just get in to review and see how I liked it, and then I ended up buying it, getting it in, and not reviewing it for a very long time because I actually just enjoyed the watch. I had no intention of selling it. I had no intention of kind of doing anything with the watch. I just enjoyed wearing it. I was struck by the dial, the overall construction, the feel, and the value that you were getting. Uh, it is one of those very few brands that I think is still creating a very competitive and interesting product at its price point. Now, to be fair, I don't think I'd be as interested in some of the more simple offerings with the plain colored dials. This brushed styling, which I believe at the moment comes in blue and kind of a charcoal black gray, are probably the best versions of the Diver One, in my opinion. They add a lot more life to the watch and a lot more life to a dive watch than you would expect. To me, this is one of those watches where the pros far outweigh the cons. I'm really grasping at straws to find any cons to kind of mention in the first place. And it's one of those things where as long as you aesthetically like this watch and you think you'll enjoy it, you'll probably end up loving it. It's good value. It's a good looking watch, uh, especially in titanium. It's a very fun thing to add to the collection. It's comfortable to wear. And if you don't already have a titanium watch in your collection, it adds a different aspect when you add this watch into it because it is a different metal, it is a different feel on wrist, different wearing experience, and because titanium tends to be this very dark gunmetal gray, it visually looks different from everything else in your box. So this is a very compelling watch. I enjoyed my time with it immensely, and I think you will too. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Thank you as always for watching the video, and I'll see you in another one.